This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, ho, 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 and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard here every Saturday from 11 to noon at Bumper to Bumper Radio. We're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. The best way we can do that is to make you comfortable around car repair, putting you in the know so it's not this uh, you know, your car's broken down and now I'm super nervous about getting fixed. What's it going to cost me? What does this mean? Or they're calling me up telling me I need $1,000 worth of maintenance items. Do I get those things? And it can create a lot of anxiety if you're not sure. And I think that's the thing is people may have the $1,000 to spend, but they, they're nervous that they're getting one over on them. Well, they don't understand it. And maybe that's part of uh – I guess there's several parts of being prepared for auto repair. There, there's have the budget, but there, but there's um, not not just having the budget, but being just prepared for the like you said, the anxiety uh, of of I don't know what to do. So that's why you want to kind of have things mm-hmm. in order. So we're going to help you with that today. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. It's six zero two two seven seven K T A R, and you can always text us. At four one one nine two three, provided you're not driving, we're assuming you're all out cruising around doing your last, last minute, minute Christmas. If you're shopping. a guy, you just started your holiday shopping today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm doing it after the show, right? So we want to have a good running car, but yeah, going in, going into the, going into next year, we want to make sure everybody is armed with information, and and information makes things easier. You know, knowledge is power. If you under and if you understand how the process sh- maybe should work, mm. or we hope that it works, because there's different kinds of repairs and they all play out differently, even at different kinds of there's different kinds of shops too. Mm. So. Yeah. So and if you you've been hesitant to call this show in the past, you're like oh, I won't get through. Today you'll get through because <laughs> everyone's shopping. So if there's something on your plate or repair that you're considering. Or maybe you're thinking about buying a new car, or maybe you're not sure on a particular expectation. Matt, I was looking at one of the emails in there, and the gentleman got a $1,000 quote to steer a steer, install a steering stabilizer on his car, and then he also got a $4,000 quote. And uh, something like that. I mean, we can talk about those things as far as whatever you got. Give us a call, 602-277-5827. The reason this seemed like a topic to me is we had, we had this young girl that brought her car in uh, earlier in the week. And she brought the car in, and and she was already at another shop, and they told her it's going to need all this stuff, $1,000 worth of work. And we said, well, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. And we're going to call you this evening with a price, uh, and then from there we can decide what you want to do to the car, you know. And so this evening to us meant 5 o'clock. She called us by 2 o'clock, and she's like, is my car ready yet? Is it fixed? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, what's, what's funny there, David, and I know the process at your shop. You guys are very methodical about – you know, because most of your repairs aren't, you know, contrary to my shop, and this way you get into a different kind of shop. You are a transmission specialist, but of course you do everything else as well, just because you know, half the time people come for a transmission, it's really not a transmission problem. So you've got to be able to fix their car. Now, our shop, we're a repair shop, but we also do maintenance. So we do everything, if you will. So most of our cars that come in for our customers, they come in the same day and they leave the same day. Where in your situation, they don't come and leave the same day, probably the overwhelming majority of the time, and that's clear up front. But it's the same thing with giving somebody an S. You know, you t- tell them two numbers, 400 to 600, they only hear the 400. Right. We'll, ha- we'll call you and check it out this afternoon by 4 o'clock or 530. They just heard afternoon, <laughs> not, <laughs> not the time. So. Yeah, well, these I mean, these conversations that we have with consumers in our shops, we have day in and day out. So we literally, we've been through the same conversation over and over again. Now, sometimes with our people, they may cut the communication process shy or maybe not. But I would say as a consumer, one of the best ways to, to understand the process when they're talking to you 
take notes, listen, pay attention to what they're saying, because they have had this conversation before. So they're saying, hey, well, here's what's going to happen, and then this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen. And they can ask them all, all along the way so you have the right expectations so you're not caught off guard by anything. Well, and I'm going to tell you, you say listen, pay attention, take notes, but ask questions too. Yes. I mean, you, you really need to ask, why are we doing this? Or and, and maybe confirm what you think you heard. That's a good, Oh, so yeah. it's going to be done at 4 o'clock? No, 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 no. No, 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 yeah. call you at 4 o'clock, so... Um, hey, I'm guilty of it. You know, I go somewhere, I go to dinner, or I think I heard something, or I wanted to hear something. You know, you, uh, you have this selective hearing. Uh, we're all guilty of it. So you just, just it's put, like when Matt put, shows up late when we're supposed to plan for this show. I thought you said ten o'clock, Dave. <laughs> no, Matt. <laughs> no. Uh, now, if you're talking today, I said I am not even going to bother coming in. I got stuff to do. So shopping. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which I didn't do. Amazon is fantastic for shopping for Christmas gifts, by the way. Yeah, uh, they it are. It makes it a little easier. So, Dave, um, communication. So let's talk about a, t you know, the type of repair. So, um, you know, I think at most shops you're going to go in. You've probably already made your appointment. So you want to talk about a breakdown or just an appointment? Or just you well, showed up out look, of the I mean, there's, I mean, there is, there is services that you get into your car. And uh, I, I would call them menu item services. You're going to get an oil change. You know, maybe you're going to get a radiator service. Just some of the common standard stuff. And then there's repair services. That's where that's where something in my car is not right, you know. Something. So the common stuff is – so in that case, your car probably has 60,000, 80,000 miles on it. You have, it's not in the breakdown stage or major mm -hmm. major service. It's, it's the quick kind of stuff, oil changes. Probably brake job falls in that category, wouldn't you say? Well, here's the other thing that happens, though. Someone will make, call our shop. They'll make an appointment for an oil change. We'll say, hey, drop it off at 7. We'll have it out, out done by noon. And then as they're walking out the door, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, my horn doesn't work. Oh, by the way, my left rear window doesn't work. Oh, by the way, by the way. And then it's like, well, we had, we had figured so much time for it, and, and now we're, we're going to still try and scramble to get it done by that 12 o'clock. But now we're like, this, this list of items just got a lot bigger. You know, each of those are items that got to be figured out. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes it's a glance, and sometimes it – or guess what happens too? We have certain levels of technicians in the shops at times. We have mm. master technicians. We have – you know, you can range them from an A through a C, and A is the, you know, the top dog, the big attorney. Mm. And, and the C guys, the paralegal, can do just fine work and write those letters, but the big dog still needs to double-check some of the work maybe or – or whatever. So we, we might have that simple service scheduled for our maintenance guy. And then as you're walking out the door, you drop two bombs. Whoa. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can't do those. Now we have to rearrange the schedule. So there's a lot of stuff that happens uh, when your car's coming in a lot behind the scenes. Um, Dave, another thing, you know, people will say, well, I made an appointment for 830 and it's noon. You haven't done yet. But the appointment, and again, we have to make sure at the we shop communicate. we're communicating. But oftentimes that 830 appointment is just the time to drop your car off. So there's not 14 people in line all at 730 when the door is open. Because we can't start on every car at the same time. We can't finish every car at the same right. time. You know, It's we're, not like the doctor's office where you got to go in there and sit and wait with your car. Right. Boy, that would really drive everybody nuts if you had to do that. Well, I think the other thing, too, is is proactive. You know, We're talking about the anxiety around auto repair. When it's proactive auto repair and maintenance, it's, it's a lot easier than if it's reactive auto repair and maintenance. So proactive means you do call, you do make an appointment, you do figure on some alternative transportation so your car can be down at the shop. Because you may have planned for a day, but they may say, oh, by the way, you, you, your tire's about to fall or your wheel's about to fall off your car because all this other stuff is bad. And, and so you're not, you, you kind of planned for that. You know, it's not like the doctor's office. We can't take a part off your car and send you home and have a test done then call you back and discuss it with you and then reschedule. You know, you bring your car in. We can't just say, okay, well, we're going to pop the radiator out and we're going to pull the transmission. We'll send those out to the lab. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so it, it, it is totally different. And these things can evolve, too. I mean, I can, I can talk about my... My dad's car that's in the shop right now. He's mm. down here for Christmas. He and, trusts and, you to fix his car? Yes, wow. yes, he does. 200 and some odd thousand miles in this 99 Acura. But in any case, we were preaching. I was preaching last week, don't do preventive maintenance work. You don't need to. This is a prime example. Before dad, a trip. Before here. a trip. Yeah. yeah, do it, but don't, you know, don't do elective repairs right before you're going to go out of town. Things change. Things break. People make mistakes. 
who knows what could happen. So this is a bad scenario no matter what time of year it is. But we planned to fix his car this week because it was going to be slow. Two bolts broke off. You could have never planned for that. This job turned in from a regular timing belt job to having to pull the engine out of the car and spend hours drilling and tapping and and, uh, and repairing some threads that on bolts that were just seized into an aluminum block. Nothing you can predict and nothing you can do about it. Yes. So things change. They can go completely haywire. So proactive auto repair, planning on it, and it's not it's not Thursday, Friday before you go on vacation. If you like stress, do it that way. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, go for it. You know? You call me up on a Friday afternoon when Saturday morning you're going out of town. Sure, absolutely. If you love stress, go for it, you know? Yeah. I had a, I had a call yesterday. A lot of people think, I need to get an oil change. So if you're out there driving around today and you think you've got to get an oil change so you can go out of town, don't waste your time. Yeah. Go to your shop maybe and say, can you guys check my tire pressures, make sure my car is full of oil? That'll, that'll get you on you your know, trip. That'll get you on your trip. Just this magic solution of fresh oil in the crankcase is not going to make that car. And I would argue that you've just exposed you, you know, the risk and reward. You have exposure. Somebody had to undo some screws. Somebody had to you assume mm-hmm. put them in. Right. <laughs> so it may uh, feel like a placebo. You know, it's a placebo effect. I'm going to feel better about taking my car because it's got clean, cool, refreshing oil in there. You know, that's that's I think all the marketing like you go to the car wash, they got this this video up top and it shows this transmission with this nasty sludgy old fluid and then how they can make it all clean and refreshing and your transmission is going to be so much be healthier. And thank you at Christmas <laughs> for the trip and reward you nicely. I don't think so. So anyhow, if you've never called the show and you want to call the show, give us a call today because you know what? Today's the day to call because everyone's out Christmas shopping. And if you're sitting around because you got all your shopping done and you're proactive on your auto repair maintenance, you want to talk about it anyway, 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. When we come back, we've got Dan in Phoenix with the 01 Honda Passport and room for more. We'll be right back. This Christmas, KTAR News takes a break from the news cycle and brings you an American Christmas featuring the music of Mannheim Steamroller. You'll learn things you never knew about the Christmas holiday, the history of Christmas in the United States, and the stories of how some of your favorite Christmas songs came to be. Of course, we'll still be standing by to bring you any important breaking news, but KTAR News and Hayes Heating and Cooling are proud to help lift up your spirit this holiday season with this exclusive Christmas special. Listen to An American Christmas, Christmas Eve, and Christmas Day on KTAR News, 92.3 FM. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave. And one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with the factory fresh guarantee And they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with a repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. The right to choose a repair facility is yours, not the insurance companies. We work with all insurance companies, but we work for you. Campus Body Salon, bumper-to-bumper radio approved and independently family-owned and operated since 1973. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair.
Well, ho, ho, ho. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you out with your car. And uh, we do got some phone calls that came through, so not everybody's, you know, some people got their Christmas shopping done. You know, that would include Regina and Matt and uh, a couple more to be screened yet, but we've got Dan in Phoenix. He has a 2001 Honda Passport. How can we help you, Dan? You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, first of all, I'd like to say you're, I agree with you 100% on being proactive on the maintenance and upkeep of a car. I'm going to be hitting about 190000 on mine. Okay, barely broken in. <laughs> I plan to keep it as long as I can. And uh, the issue I'm having right now is I had to have a fuel pump along with the sending unit because I couldn't pass the uh, emissions test. And right after that, I noticed that I could not fill up the gas tank mm -hmm. on the lowest even click. I had a, a baby to gas in. That'd take now, you about 15 minutes to fill it up. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's that? I said it would take you about 15 minutes to fill it up. Yeah, that's about it because i got to stand there and actually hold it at the slowest speed that it'll go. And he was saying that maybe it might be the ball valve. And I go, well, it wasn't doing that before you did the work. Now you're telling me this, and now you're going to have to drop my gas tank and fix whatever it is that's not causing the gas to go into the tank. So, Dan, uh, Dan, the first time, so you, you, you failed emissions because the check engine light was on. And then if, right. I, if we heard you right, the check engine light was on. There was probably a code or something for a fuel sending unit, and that's what they had to replace, correct? That, that's correct, along with the fuel pump, because right? oh. it's all one unit. It's one unit. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you know, in many cars, you have to drop the fuel tank down or remove the fuel tank to access the fuel pump. But on a lot of cars, and I think the same case may be in your Honda, you don't remove the fuel pump or don't have to remove the tank. There's an access panel. Maybe you have to pull up some seats somewhere. Uh, and there's, there's you know, probably several screws around a plate. You pull that up. There's the fuel pump right there. And in that case... I would say they probably didn't mess anything up. A, I mean, is a it, Honda they, has an access port like that? Uh, I, I I don't recall off the top of my head. Maybe I cut Dan a little bit early because he says, "Well, now you have to drop my tank." So I'm thinking they didn't have to. If they had to drop the fuel tank or remove the tank to access to get to the top of that to make a make a repair, and now you're having this problem, I would say for sure it's absolutely. I mean. On the surface, it, it makes sense that it's related. If yours is the type where they have to go through just an access panel inside the car to lift that out and replace it, I'm going to say 50-50 shot. It's not related. Mm. When I mean, yeah, I think so. I think so. And may, maybe there was a code for a sending unit, but I don't know if that's one that would light the check engine light. The other thing I was thinking is maybe he, you know, maybe it was they replaced it because there was some sort of a evap leak right there at the top of that thing. So maybe there's, you know, some of those lines. I think when the gas tank goes back up, did something get pinched off? And, you know, a lot of things can happen there. So they probably just got to pull it back out. And you know, check and Dan, stuff. the thing is, and again, let's go back to the beginning of the show, communicating with the shop. Mm. Dave, we had a, well, we probably can't talk about the BBB cases today, but let the guys if you trust these people, and you should trust them because that's why you're there, let the repair see itself out. We don't know who's – if you want to say fault, a little bit strong of a word, or whose responsibility, we don't know whose responsibility is until the car is fixed. So hopefully you have a good relationship with them and let it play out. Let them re-diagnose the car and let them take ownership of it and then just trust them, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. And ask you can ask questions, you know, not not like uh, you know, like cross-examining someone, but just ask to help understand, see, so you know Show what me. they're coming for on it for sure. So anyhow, Dan, thanks for the call. 602-277-5827. Let's go with Matt in Scottsdale. He's got a 2004 Acura MDX. How can we help you, Matt? You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey guys, thanks for taking the call. Um, yeah, about a week and I was I'm kind of calling in reply to the the comments uh, you guys made earlier on the uh, the anxiety people go mm, through. A uh, sure. week and a half ago, uh, you know, my son drives our old uh, family car now, the 04 MDX, and the transmission uh, went down at a stoplight. So we took it to the transmission shop. It's 3500 bucks to get it uh, rebuilt. 
the car is probably worth four to forty-five, somewhere in there. And so my anxiety was, did I do the right thing? You know, it's, it's they did a good job; it's running well. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous that I spent thirty-five hundred dollars that I shouldn't have on a car that's now going to just be a, you know, a yeah. Hole. <clears throat> let me let me let me help you feel better about that. Okay, so your MDX before it broke was worth four thousand bucks. After it broke, it was worth five hundred bucks, right? So you just lost thirty-five hundred bucks right there. So you spent thirty-five hundred bucks to rebuy your car. Either way, you're spending the money, whether it be the value of the car or the value of the repair. And, and you know how many you know how many vehicles that we fix that's an 04 MDX or an Acura TL or something? Pick your flavor, yeah. That, 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 that the child is now driving because the parents, you know, put a bunch of miles on it. And you don't want to put your kid in a brand new car. Right. And it's pro- probably not the best idea, you know, in a, in a lot of cases. So... I think I think it was it absolutely. I mean, if either way you pencil it out, you're gonna spend the money. So now you still have a car with a good, you know. Otherwise, you didn't have a car. Well, again, let's lay that same scenario, Matt. And I think you made a good choice. So hopefully, the transmission shop you were talking to didn't have this pile of rust bucket falling apart, and they were just so eager to sell a transmission that they did. But I say the best used car to buy is the one you already own. Yeah. If you and, and Dave, same scenario. That Acura that was worth four grand is now worth five hundred. Take your five hundred bucks. Take the thirty five hundred that you spent. That's the same four thousand dollars. Now go buy a used car. You're not going to get your two thousand four Acura that mm-hmm. you, maybe you bought brand new. That maybe it's got a nice set of Michelins on it. That just had brakes done, and you understand the history of the car. So that is absolutely a good repair. It is a good repair. And, you know, on something like that, you're going to spend a big chunk of change. You want to make sure it's the last time you buy a transmission. Mm-hmm. So, especially on Honda products, you know, you want to see a good at least a three-year warranty on the thing. Yeah, and, and you know, you go get in an accident or someone totals you, you're going to lose the money. You're just going to, I mean, you're going to want to fight with the insurance companies. Hey, this is this wasn't a no four. This is no four with a bunch of miles, but it's better because it has a new transmission and, and maybe get the value back up. So that's the only gamble you have there is if you were to have a total loss situation. Well, I told you last week, because and you're out shopping today, you know what to buy for the mechanic in your life. So when we come back, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you at least five great ideas that you can't go wrong with for the mechanic in your life because you're like, oh man, what do I buy, Jimmy? I know he's into cars, you know. And you may think they're great. What's that? I do think they're great. <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah, it's me, they, right? I came up with them. They're oh, absolutely they fantastic. They and, and give us a call at 602-277-5827. You listen to Bumper to Bumper Radio. It's Gatos, and I want to wish all you kids out there a Merry Christmas. But if Santa's seen your Instagram, you're getting clothes for Christmas. What do PGA Tour stars Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, and Daniel Berger have in common? They've all played in the Patriot All-America Golf Tournament at the Wigwam during their college careers. See Golf Stars of Tomorrow at the 2017 Patriot All-America Invitational, December 29th through 31st at the Wigwam Resort in Litchfield Park. In cooperation with the Folds of Honor Foundation, golfers in the Patriot All-America play in honor of and represent a fallen soldier. This unique tournament is free to attend. For more information, visit PatriotAllAmerica.com. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at MyCarHurts.com. Gas or diesel foreign or domestic. If your car hurts,
Kurtz. Take it to Kurtz. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. It's 11.30. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. Some retailers are offering Super Saturday deals for last-minute holiday shoppers. Others are keeping select stores open for 24 hours a day until Christmas Eve. That means some Kohl's and Toys R Us are staying up around the clock, especially the ones in the Bay Area. Kohl's beauty advisor, Allison Jones, says the early morning hours are great for beating the last-minute crowds. It's a thinner crowd. There's not as many people here at 4, 5 in the morning. So if you really, really don't want to deal with the crowds, then come see us at like 3 in the morning. In other news this morning, a tropical storm in the southern Philippines unleashed flash floods that swept away people and houses and also set off landslides, leaving at least 75 dead and 58 others missing. Officials said Saturday that the mo- that most of the deaths from the tropical storm Tembin were in the hard-hit provinces of Lanao del Norte and Lanao del Sur on the Zamboanga Peninsula. And now for a check on traffic, here's Mike Daniels in the KTAR Traffic Center. Well, thank you, Tom. Do have injury accidents involving a pedestrian on Buckeye Road in Central. Emergency crews are on scene. Expect some delays in that area. And a crash at 75th Avenue and Cactus. This report brought to you by Scott Condé Dentistry. If you're afraid of the dentist, Dr. Condé can help. For more information and a complimentary exam, text the word SMILE to 411-923. That's the word SMILE to 411-923. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Cloudy and overcast today. Looks like temperatures are on the rise. Right now, uh, 66 degrees is our expected high for today. 71 on Sunday and 72 on Christmas. Overnight lows will dip down into the mid-40s. Right now, 53 degrees in Mesa. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with a repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. The right to choose a repair facility is yours, not the insurance companies. We work with all insurance companies, but we work for you. Campus Body Salon, bumper-to-bumper radio approved and independently family-owned and operated since 1973. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, GoodWorks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. GoodWorks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at GoodWorksAutoRepair.com. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Man, Dave, I was hoping for some more mystery Christmas music to pop up there in the the beginning we'll, we'll get it on the coming back from the next break so welcome back to bumper to bumper radio i'm matt allen this other guy standing here every week is dave riccio and we are your ktr car guys uh talking today christmas well 
it's, everybody's out doing their shopping, so now's a good time to call if you have some questions for us. Doesn't matter what it is. Whatever the question you have, why is my light flashing? Why is this car need an oil change ever? Why can't I get the gas to pump in my in my car or, or should I get a rental car before I head out of town tomorrow? It's not too late to avoid a breakdown. You can you can uh, just get a rental car maybe, Dave. What do you think? That's an RV. It's a good looking vehicle, ain't it? But well, don't you go falling in love with it now. Come on. Who here has watched Christmas Vacation three times already? <laughs> Probably yeah. a lot of people. Oh, Carrie's classic. about to fall out of the chair. You know? I, when yeah. they made that movie, do you ever think they thought it would be as much of a played over and over again movie? It's like the Christmas story or whatever. I mean, they play that thing all 24-7 for Christmas Day. Yeah. Christmas Vacation is just about there. <laughs> just about, huh? <laughs> so, so anyway, well, we do got open lines. We've got uh, Neo and we've got Regina and open lines at 602-277-5827. Let's take Regina, uh, 2014 Hyundai Sonata. How can all we help the way you? from Las Vegas. Regina, are you listening in Las Vegas? Um, actually, no, I'm here in town. Ah, okay. Well, welcome. So, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So just getting a, getting a sense of what I need to do about the situation, I have a new Hyundai that I purchased at a Ford dealership used, and I'm trying to understand something because my brakes make a noise every single time I press on the brakes. I have driven it for over a 1,000 miles. I went back to the dealership. And I told them what happened. They took the drive. They made the assessment. They did the inspection. They said everything's okay. And then I actually spoke to one of the techs because I'm not one to stand around and listen to a lot of politics. And basically what they're telling me is there's a Ford brake pad on the Hyundai brake. Do I need to get that replaced in order to get this noise killed? Something doesn't make sense, Dave. You know, is the noise like, there, I'm going to give you a couple of instances. There's kind of a squeaky, high-pitched noise, and then there's kind of a <laughs> noise. Is it It's the, neither. neither. It literally is. As soon as I hit the pedal, it's <laughs> every single time, and it annoys me. And and did they, igno- did they hear the noise with you? They acknowledge yep. that, in fact, there is a noise there? Yeah, it actually, the dealer that actually, uh, the salesman that actually uh, sold me the vehicle took me on a small drive around the lot, and he said, yep, it's there. He goes, and that's no, you know, that's, you know, verifiable. So, and I also took the drive when I got the car back after they did their assessment, and he said, there's nothing we can do about it. And like I said, I talked to the tech, and the tech told me it's the product. So, is that something I need to push for? Is it going to degrade the actual rotors. I mean, am I am I looking at something down the road that's going to be a big cost item? I don't necessarily think so. I mean, how many miles are in the car, Regina? Sixty-six thousand at not, right now. Okay, so it definitely does not have the original brake pads on it for sure. Correct. Dave, you know, I want to address a couple things. For someone to say there's a Ford brake pad on your Hyundai is probably just wrong. Uh, there, I mean, you're not going to take a, a brake pad that fits onto a Ford Focus, for example, and put it on a Hyundai. The no, owner, they showed it to me. Well, the guy, I, I literally took it to the tech that did the work on the car because I would, I'm, my son's a race car driver, so I know who to talk to. And, and that's where I'm concerned because I thought, you know, they're just trying to pull one over on me. Right. And it's like, you know, we can't do anything. That's the way it is. Well, no, it's not the way it is. You know, well, I think you're right. I watched an interview from a good friend of mine who's a race car driver. And one of his comments was, I don't know anything about cars. I just know how to drive them fast. <laughs> so, so don't take that to the bank. <laughs> that's, uh, your, you know, your son may be very, very well. But let me finish my thought was no one put Ford brake pads on your Hyundai. Now, Ford or Motorcraft may make a brake pad as a brand that fits on a Hyundai, but there's not Ford Focus brake pads stuffed on your Hyundai. So I would agree that there's probably a problem. It's probably an annoyance, and it probably has to do with the quality or mixture of the brake pad and the brake rotor. I would ask them to fix the car. It shouldn't make that noise and, and do what's necessary to make that noise go away. And if that's getting an aftermarket brake pad, which are perfectly good, like Centric or Napa has them, or, or pick your flavor. You want a good quality brake pad, and you want the proper rotor that matches. Otherwise, there shouldn't be any noise. Well, the technician's not necessarily going to be able to do anything as far as getting you taken care of. In many cases, you're dealing with somebody in the office. I'm just thinking of a dealership kind of world. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you might need to step it up a little bit. You know, maybe 
Call, leave a message with the general manager, maybe shoot him an email. Any of these dealership websites, you can shoot him an email to say, hey, I bought this car from you. The brakes are annoyingly noisy, and uh, you know I would like to have it addressed. Can you help me out here because I feel like I'm getting some sort of runaround? Go that route and see if that helps. I would, yes. I would go there because you spent good money buying the car. You want a good car. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's not. This is not a five hundred thousand mile car. It's it's fairly young in its existence. In worst case, if you just got as long as they're safe, if you can deal with it, you're gonna, you know, spend probably depending on the rotors in the future. Three hundred fifty dollars is pretty normal for a good quality brake job. Remember, there's no such thing as a ninety nine dollar one. <laughs> and, and if although you, they're advertised, and if you needed brake rotors, you know maybe they're a hundred bucks a piece. So now you're up to a five hundred and fifty dollar budget is what you might want to think if you can't get resolution through them. Get what you can out of the out of the life of the pads and move on. For sure. Thanks for the call, Regina. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. And uh, we've got Neo. And that reminds me of the movie Matrix. Neo in Scottsdale, O2 Dodge Ram. Neo, did your parents like the movie The Matrix? No, it's Neo. 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 Oh, all right. Tom's hey. in there shaking his head because I was like, this is really cool. Neo's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a good movie. <laughs> it uh, is a good okay, movie. Here, here's the deal. I've got my, my truck, and it's just kind of like our RV-type truck. I only use it occasionally. It's got real low miles. But anyway... I was troubleshooting uh, an air conditioning problem for quite a while, and I never could actually isolate the issue. Well, I ended up replacing the evaporator here uh, back in September, and everything was working good, pressured it up, you know, and it was perfect. Well, we were up at the lake with the truck here just the other day, and I thought, well, I'm going to try the air conditioning just to see if it's still good. And... Um, and it blew warm air, as in almost like the heater was on for 10, 15 seconds. And then I could hear the compressor coming in and out. And it occurred to me that it seems that I recall some of the air conditioning systems used to have, or maybe still do, and that's my question, some kind of a switch system in there that if the outside air temperature is in the 50s, let's say, which it was, um, that it won't kick the compressor in for cold air. It'll actually reverse like a heater as in defrost mode. Is that correct? That's the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, it's not going to substitute and start turning, turning the heat on. Well, I mean, it, there's, there's a low pressure AC switch that um, will allow, not allow the compressor to engage if it's low on, if the system is low on pressure, but that's also a cycling switch, you know, Naturally, when the AC is working, the, the low side or the cold side is going to drop in pressure. Um, so if it is freezing cold outside, the temperature is going to be low, and it probably won't allow the, the compressor to come on. But alternatively, the compressor comes on when you request the defrost because that's how it dries the air. So I'm going to say that theory is no, it, it's, it's not. I'm wondering if, I mean, he said when he first fired it up, he got hot air out of it, like maybe we had a blend door issue, mm -hmm. something along those lines. And I know my car, when I jump in it, sometimes I jump in it and the hot air is coming out. It, and I got to figure, I haven't had a chance to figure that out. But it's it's on for like maybe 10 seconds as I as I feel the blend door is moving over the other side. Well, maybe they park in a home position and, and, and then go back. It's hard to say. But the other thing you have to you know remember too, and, and I always have to remind my kids of this when we get in the car, especially when we all load in the excursion or something. It's freezing cold out. The car hasn't been running. What do they do? Turn on the heat. They got everything blowing full blast going, oh, it's cold. It's like the car's not even warmed up. The car has to be warm before the heater's going to work. So It makes you feel better. I leave the dome light on. It feels warmer. Yeah. You know. So just just remember that. Get the car up to operating temperature and then crank the fan speed up after you see the needle on the on the dash move a little bit. For sure. Well, good luck with that, Neo. If you still got more questions, you can uh, – Go to our website, bumper to bumper and uh, if you're looking for a shop, sounds like you're pretty capable if you're fixing an evaporative core uh, in the dashboard. Yeah. So, anyhow, let's go with, uh, I think we can sneak in, uh, boy, Trevor in Mesa, 2012 Fiesta. How can we help you, Trevor? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Hey, guys. Uh, so uh, I just bought this car like a few months ago. And uh, I was driving down the road, and I had a bunch of lights come on all at once and flash off. I had, like, the, the hill assist, the uh, traction control, the brake light, and the traction control system actually said turned off. 
So um, I'm a former Ford technician. I've been out of the business for a few years, but I went ahead and uh, I checked the battery because I know it does some screwy things. The battery was fine. And then I checked the alternator. I did a uh, like a test with my multimeter that I have, and it was only charging at like 11 and a half volts. So I threw a new alternator in it, and uh, a few days later I had the same issue again. And I checked the new alternator, and it's only charging at about 12 and a half volts. And when I give it, like if I rev up the RPMs or anything, the voltage doesn't go up. It stays consistently at 12 and a half. Doesn't matter what lights I turn on, what lights I turn off, like. You know, I turned everything on, all the lights, the radio up, everything, all the accessories, and it doesn't change. It stays at 12.5. But I'm still having this issue when I drive down the road, and sometimes the car almost shuts off. So I'm not, I don't, like, what What I'm racking my brain with is, do you guys think it would be like a, like the, the replacement part was faulty, or should I be chasing down another issue? When when it, when all that lights and bells and whistles went off, did were you able to scan the all those related modules to see if there was any diagnostic yeah. trouble codes in there? Yeah, I have a code reader, and it every time I've looked it up, it unless they're on the dash, it doesn't show anything. Even in like the uh, the past DTCs and stuff. Mm-hmm. What what level of technician were you at the Ford dealer? Uh, I was actually a entry level tech, but I went to school and I was a Ford certified tech. Right. But they never upgraded me because you know you have to have years and years of experience. And yeah. I love diagnosing stuff, so that was my thing. <laughs> right. Sure. Well, I mean, I think we've got it. I mean, I don't even. I'm not even quite clear why we replaced the alternator yet. The fact that it's doing the exact same thing is one of two things: it was misdiagnosed, or you have a bad alternator. However, having the brake and the traction control and the stability control and what the other one was, the downhill assist, Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking you've got an ABS problem. There's something going on with the analog brakes, possibly. All those systems rely on wheel speed. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be one thing in common that's going to turn all those on. Now, however, you take a Toyota, you'll have the dash light up like a Christmas tree oftentimes, and it is the alternator. Because they disable, if there's not proper voltage to the systems, it will disable those driver stability control functions and just revert, revert back. So you got to go back to square one, start over, go get a voltmeter is not the way to do a charging system analysis. You've got to get a good load on the, on, the, on, the, on the alternator and force it to work, which I guess you can do with the turn on the headlights and the air conditioning and all that stuff. But I think we need to start over, back to square one, Dave. Thanks for the call, Trevor. 602-277-5827. we come back, we've got Dale, Angelica, and Bruce. And we're going to help you out with those gift ideas for Christmas. We'll be right back. I'm Griselda Satino with KTAR News. Often we are so concerned about shopping for gifts that we lose sight of the importance of Christmas. This time of year is about family and faith. May the miracle of this special season fill you and your loved ones with joy. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. 
What do PGA Tour stars Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, and Daniel Berger have in common? They've all played in the Patriot All-America Golf Tournament at the Wigwam during their college careers. See Golf Stars of Tomorrow at the 2017 Patriot All-America Invitational, December 29th through 31st at the Wigwam Resort in Litchfield Park. In cooperation with the Folds of Honor Foundation, golfers in the Patriot All-America play in honor of and represent a fallen soldier. This unique tournament is free to attend. For more information, visit PatriotAllAmerica.com. I like this kind of music. Yeah. Grandma got run over by a Camaro. We'll make it a little more <laughs> a little more car show esque. All right. Five gifts for the mechanic in your life. And uh, Matt, uh, uh, we got to be quick on this, but I said mechanics gloves, and mechanics ends with an X because it a is a, it's a brand name. They're fifteen, twenty bucks, something like that. But they're if you got if you're working on cars and you got to deal with something that's hot. Or, you know, something's going to be rough on your hands. You throw on these mechanics gloves, and they give you a little layer of protection. And the other thing you mentioned is the regular old gloves they use at the doctor's office. Those things you should have in your car. If the you latex ever gotta, gloves, yeah. Yeah, I if mean, you've got to change a tire on the side the of the road. mechanics in the shop wear them all the time. I, I have some in my car. You know, I have a diesel truck. I'll put them on so I don't have to have that stinky old diesel on my hands, you know? I get nervous. I get nervous when I hear that rubber glove snap, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Using well, the whole fist talk. Places you hang out, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the another gift. Wait, I, hold on. Uh, using the whole fist talk? There we go. <laughs> the, the other Christmas gift that I think is great, and it doesn't have to be the, for the mechanic. It can be for your son or your daughter or anybody that has a car. I just love those little they're about the size of a VHS tape, and maybe have some people listening don't know what that is. But just the battery pack, it can jumpstart the car, it can power up your cell phone, it can do a, it has a flashlight in it. Those are cool to throw in the trunk or throw in the backpack when you're going on a Read somewhere. the instructions, though, if you're going to buy one of those things, because you oh, can yeah. misuse those babies. So, yes, the little jumper box or battery kit, and then a detail kit. You know, you can go down to Acme Auto Parts down there, in, uh, because, you know, you got to have a nice wash kit, you know, so a bucket. Some car soap, special sponge, uh, wash mitt, yeah. chamois, that and, kind of stuff. And remember, the brush that you brush the wheels with is not the one you brush the paint with. So those mm -hmm. are big no-no. You know, and you don't throw the wash mitt in the driveway to pick up sand to scratch the car. You can get that stuff at Home Depot or the auto parts store or whatever. Yeah, so that's good. Detail kit, uh, you know, floor jack and jack stands, you know. Uh, you know, and you should you be careful on, you can get a kind of a chintzy little floor jack. You know, if you can actually pick up a car, I say get a real floor jack, you uh, know. And, and I say don't ever give a gift of a floor jack unless it accompanies a jack stand. You don't want to give somebody a gift for them to turn around and hurt themselves. Get and they're the heavy. Stands. So if you go in the store and you're not a big person, you know, take a big person with you down to Acme Auto Parts and get yourself a good jack stand. And the people there can help you out and don't necessarily buy the one because this one's $20 cheaper. If it's gonna if it's gonna fold over and the car's gonna fall down, we, we we don't want it. It's a safety item, so get a good one. Anyhow, Matt, we gotta get to the phones. We've got Dale, Robert, Angelica, and we go with Bruce in Phoenix. He's got a two thousand five Chevy. How can we help you, Bruce? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Howdy. I'm working on a power steering leak and uh, wondering if there's anywhere you know of open today or I can find some good O rings because I've already blown out a standard O ring in about 30 seconds. What kind of, what are you fixing? Uh, it's a fitting that goes into the pump. Okay. Dealer. Yeah. yeah just go to the parts counter. Yeah. It's your Chevy dealer. They're, they're going to have it. They you know, weren't helpful either. They said they only had sell me the pump. Something quick though. I mean, if you go down to Napa Auto Parts, they're going to have one of those little kits. You're going to open it up and there's going to be 75 comp different O-rings in there. And, uh, you know, on an O-ring, you got to make sure there's some O-rings that are actually kind of square. You know, if if you were looking at it from the mm. from the side, right. make sure you get the right O ring on there. But I would say a Napa Auto Parts would be a perfectly fine place to pick up an O ring. So, let's go with Angelica in Phoenix. She's got a 2003 Isuzu Ascent. How can we help you, Angelica? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, uh, this is Jerry. Uh, she had to run to the kitchen. Oh, okay. Do you want us to come back? <laughs> uh, no, but well, I I can I can tell what the problem with the car. So. Yeah. What do you got going on? Well, we have a, a Isuzu Ascender 2003, and uh, the problem that we have in the nighttime when you start the car, the lights 
the headlights is on, as soon as you start driving, they shut off. And then a couple of minutes later, they turn on again. So I took it to the shop. They checked the car. They said everything is fine. They probably is uh, the switch control in the dash for the light. So I bought one. I replaced it. I still doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. So um, we can figure it how out. Many, how many how many miles are on that car? I believe uh, it's a hundred and. 63,000. Okay, yeah, once you hit 160, they became a, a daytime only car. So, perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I love a lot of shops. Um, you know, the headlights don't work, but everything's okay. <laughs> you know, that, that's a, uh, that answer just disturbs me. Uh, this, Wiring diagram. Let's yeah, see what's in that circuit. Let's you, see what's heating up or loose or something like that. We got some bad connection, possibly. You're not checking them out in the daytime because you don't need them. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing, you know, for sure. But you may be hitting a bump and the lights may go out. There could be a bad connection. You could have a relay that's letting loose and not working. Yeah. So we got to see what's in that wiring diagram. Yeah, I mean, you got to yeah track battery power to the bowl, but it's got to there's a break somewhere. Well, let's get Dale surprise 2005 Sequoia, I think. Dale? Fast, Dale. Hey, Dale. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, you bet. Talking about car maintenance, my car is coming up on 90,000 miles service. Uh, one of the things that that's due is to replace the timing belt. Uh, in addition to replacing the timing belt, I was going to have my shop uh, replace the water pump and maybe the either pulleys and the, the belts and, and and such. And I'm wondering if there's anything else that they should replace while they they got the front end taken apart. You know, Dale, good question. I think you sent us an email, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. We were actually going to going to talk about this. So yeah, I would do the timing belt, the tensioner. You know, oftentimes that comes in a kit. It's got everything in it. Now, also, when you're talking to your shop, make sure you're getting the premium kit. You can get a good kit, and you can get a kit that has lesser expensive parts, but they all have the same ingredients. They're just better. So get the good kit. And and not really. I mean, I'd probably throw a radiator cap on it just because it's it's 90,000 miles. Maybe have them look at the radiator hoses. You know, you got the water pump off. Yeah, Yeah, take a peek at them. Some things you have to take off to get to it. If it makes sense to throw a thermostat in there, you already got 90,000 miles in 10, 12 years out of this one. Now's a good time. I'm a it, big fan of factory hoses. You know, I know there's other aftermarket hoses, but... Certain situations. Yeah. I mean, just, I, you know... That's kind of the way I look at it. Depends so. on the hose. Anyway, while well, you're out shopping, you know, enjoy your shopping. The craziness of the malls, remember, just to uh, take it easy, breathe easily in the parking lot, because I know it can get feisty for sure. And... Uh, Anyhow, thanks, Tom, for running the dials. Remember never to text and drive. And, uh, Matt, what, what do you got left for shopping? Who's left on your list? Everything. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm in good shape. So, yeah, just everybody be good out there. Have a Merry Christmas. And uh, see you next week.